The Hoddle Street Massacre was a mass shooting that occurred on the evening of Sunday 9 August 1987, in Hoddle Street, Clifton Hill, a suburb of Melbourne, Victoria, in Australia. The shootings resulted in the deaths of seven people, and serious injury to 19 others, after a police chase lasting more than 30 minutes. 19-year-old former Australian Army officer Cadet Julian Knight was caught in nearby Fitzroy North and arrested for the shootings. Knight was later sentenced to seven consecutive terms of life imprisonment with an on-parole period of 27 years for one of the bloodiest massacres in Australian history. As Knight was between 18 and 21, he was classed as a young adult offender under Victorian law and also because at the time Victoria did not have life without parole, he was given the 27-year minimum. Knight currently resides in the maximum security Port Phillip prison in Truganina, Victoria near Melbourne and is eligible for parole in 2014. However, the Victorian government has stated that it is unlikely Knight will ever be released. Background Knight's father was involved in the military and as such, Knight moved around a lot as a child. His lifelong dream was to defend Australia in a war. Knight entered the Royal Military College, Duntroon in Canberra, Australian Capital Territory on 13 January 1987, at the age of 18. Whilst a military career had long been a dream, he performed poorly at his studies and gained good results only in weapons expertise exercise. Knight did not like authority and he hated the social hierarchy of the army which allowed people only a few months older than him to boss him around, as they were second a year and he was first. One night, Julian Knight entered a bar looking for a fight. With him he carried a knife which he used to stab one of the second years. Due to this, Knight was discharged and sent back to Melbourne only 16 days prior to the day of the massacre. Upon returning to Melbourne, Knight found out that his longtime girlfriend would no longer see him and his mother, whom he had always relied on, had turned his childhood bedroom into an extra living room. Furthermore, Knight was without money, had no job to earn a decent wage and consequently, looked for other means. He decided to sell his car. On his way to the sale, his car broke down. The 9th of August 1987. The events of this day were pieced together after investigation by police, along with the help of Knight himself. Prior events of 11.30 a.m. on Sunday 9 August 1987, Julian Knight, a discharged army cadet, woke up in his temporary bedroom in the front room of his mother's house at No. 6 Ramsden Street, Clifton Hill, between 1.10 p.m. and 4.10 p.m. on Sunday 9 August 1987. Knight attended a belated birthday party for his mother at his grandmother's house in the Melbourne suburb of Hawthorne. Whilst at the party Knight consumed two cans of full-strength beer, he left the party in his own car and drove his younger sister home before driving aimlessly around the Clifton Hill area. At about 4.50pm Knight went to see an old girlfriend in Clifton Hill in order to give her a magazine. He only stayed at her flat for about five minutes then he continued to drive aimlessly around the area. Minutes later the gearbox of his car, his only asset, jammed and stuck in second gear. He limped the car home, where he changed clothes and drank another can of beer before walking angrily around to the nearby Royal Hotel, his local pub, at around 5.30pm. None of Knight's friends were at the Royal Hotel so he drank alone in the public bar from around 5.32pm to about 8.55pm. At around 8.50 p.m. Knight began to feel the effects of the beer he'd been drinking and he had a vision of soldiers being ambushed. He felt as if it was a call to arms, and at about 8.55 p.m. he rushed from the hotel and ran back to his mother's house. He then waited until his sister returned to the rear of the house to watch a movie on TV with their mother before he ventured upstairs to his mother's bedroom. Stored under her bed were his legally owned and licensed weapons. 
A-177 caliber Daisy BB air rifle A-177 caliber Chinese air rifle A-177 caliber Crossman model 766 air rifle A-22 caliber Ruger model 1020 seconds semi-automatic rifle A-12 gauge 8-shot Mossberg pump-action shotgun and a 7.62 mm caliber M14 semi-automatic military rifle. Knight retrieved the Ruger rifle, the Mossberg shotgun and the M14 rifle from underneath the bed. Then he took the Ruger and the Mossberg back downstairs to the front room. He then returned to his mother's room and collected the M14, and a steel ammunition box and a leather shotgun cartridge belt from his mother's wardrobe before returning to the front room to load the three firearms. After loading the three firearms and stuffing his pockets with ammunition, including a suicide 7.62 mm round which he placed in the front right-hand pocket of his jeans, he placed a black combat knife down the back of his jeans. He then slung the M14 over his back and picked up the Marsberg and the Ruger in his right and left hands respectively. Immediately afterwards, at around 9.29 p.m., he opened the front door of the house and ran out into Ramsden Street. After running west along Ramsden Street and crossing the nearby railway line, Knight reached the eastern side of the main four-lane arterial road known as Hoddle Street. At 9.30 p.m., from the nature strip on the east side of the road, Knight commenced firing on passing cars with the Ruger rifle. Massacre begins the first car that night opened fire on contained a married couple, Con and Rita Vickos. Rita received minor wounds and her husband drove on before stopping at a mobile service station about 150 meters further south down Hoddle Street. Following the Vicosses was a car containing Michael Anthony and Trevor Smelia, and a car driven by Gregory Elliott. A bullet struck Elliott's vehicle, narrowly missing his head. Both of these cars were damaged but none of the occupants was wounded. Following Elliot's car was a car driven by Alan Jury and containing Monica Vitelli and Danielle Mina. Jury and Vitelli were both wounded and they joined the others at the mobile service station. Knight fired rapid bursts at each car, and he reloaded with spare 10-round Ruger magazines as he moved north along the nature strip towards the nearby Clifton Hill railway station. He ensured that he fired on every south and northbound vehicle as it passed him. The next car he fired on contained Rywan Crichton, Bernd Mashiel and Diane Arnold, who all escaped injury. The following car was driven by Sand Wang, who received minor wounds. The next car was driven by Diane Fitzpatrick, who received a serious back wound. The next three cars to be shot at contained Michael Pierce and Jacqueline Langusk, Isaac Lohman and Reginald Dutton and Dana Sabolki respectively, and they were all fortunate to escape injury. At around 9.35 p.m. Knight ran out of ammunition for the Ruger, so he dropped it on the nature strip and commenced firing with the Mossberg shotgun. The loud blasts of the shotgun alerted local residents to the shooting and the first calls were made to the Victoria Police's Emergency Communications Centre, D24. The first car to be fired at with the shotgun contained Sharon Maunda, who did not receive any wound and who did not realise the front of her car had been hit. The next car to be hit was driven by Vesna Markovska, who received minor wounds, followed by a car driven by her fiancé, Zoran Trzczewski, who also received minor wounds. Both Markovska and Trzczewski parked their cars by the side of the road and got out to take cover. As they did so a car driven by Georgina Gina Paparianu stopped on the opposite side of the street. Knight immediately fired on the car and Gina was slightly wounded. Soon afterwards a car driven by Jane Morris and also containing Kay Edwards and Cecily Corliss drove south through the ambush zone. Police arrive all further south down Hoddle Street. They flagged down the police divisional van containing Constable Glenn Nichols and Constable Belinda Boucher and informed them about the shootings. 
Nichols and Boucher immediately drove to the scene with their lights and siren on as they radioed D-24. Soon after 9.38 p.m. they reached the intersection of Hoddle Street and Ramsden Street and they were shot at by night. Knight continued to change position as he fired at a procession of four single-occupant cars which, in chronological order, were driven by Matthew Morrow, Edward McShortale, Trevor Robinson and Keith Wing Shing. McShortale received minor wounds but Wing Shing, who stopped his car opposite Knight, received serious jaw and throat wounds. Knight continued to reload and change position as he continued to fire at the passing cars. The next car Knight fired at was a car containing Kevin Skinner, his wife Tracy and their son Adam. Tracy was killed instantly by a blast to the face and Adam, who was on her lap below the window sill, received minor glass wounds. Following this, a local resident, Peter Kerma, and a friend of his, John Muscat, approached the scene from the western side of the street. Knight fired one shot at them which fatally wounded Muscat in the head and chest, and which seriously wounded Kerma. Immediately after this the attendant at the nearby swimming pool, Steve White, ran to their aid and was seriously wounded by Knight's final shotgun blast. It was now 9.39 p.m. and numerous police units were rushing to the scene. Knight dropped the empty Mossberg shotgun on the ground and took up a prone firing position with his M14 rifle. At this point Vesna Markovska broke cover from behind her car and made for the footpath on the eastern side of Hoddle Street. As she stepped onto the footpath she was spotted by Knight who fired a shot which seriously wounded her. When she fell back onto the roadway Knight fired two further shots which killed her. It was now 9.40 p.m. and D-24 notified the police air wing that one of their aerospatial dolphin police helicopters was needed to assist the police at the scene. Moments later, in a break in the firing, one of the police officers on the western side of Hoddle Street fired a shot at night, which missed him by a couple of meters. Immediately following this shot Robert Mitchell, who had driven through the ambush zone unscathed and parked his car further down Hoddle Street, ran up the eastern side of the street in an attempt to render assistance to the fallen Markovska. As he reached her and came to a halt, Knight quickly fired a shot at him which hit him in the right side of the head and killed him instantly. At 9.41 p.m., as three police units took up positions in Mayor's Park on the western side of Hoddle Street and other police units took up positions in the surrounding area, Knight opened fire on a car driven by Jacqueline Turner and on Gina Paparianu as she walked from her car to help Markovska and Mitchell. Turner's car was not hit but Paparianu was fatally wounded in the left side as she reached Markovska. Following this, Knight fired on a car driven by John Finn who received minor wounds. The next car Knight shot it was driven by Andrew Hack who was seriously wounded in the left side. Following Hack was a car driven by Dushan Flajnik which Knight fired it. Flajnik was hit in the left side and bled to death in his car. At 9.43 p.m. Constable Boucher requested another ambulance from D-24 and nominated the mobile service station as a safe rendezvous point for ambulances. As two more police units arrived there, the next car to be shot at contained Michael Smith and Jacqueline Megans. Smith received minor wounds while Megans was seriously wounded in the shoulder. As they were fired upon the first two ambulances arrived at the scene, one at the mobile service station and one at Mayor's Park. It was now 9.44 p.m. and the next car to be shot at was driven by Stephen Mihailidis who escaped unscathed. Immediately afterwards Knight fired at the rider of a motorcycle, Kenneth Shane Stanton, who was hit in the left leg and fell onto the roadway. As he lay there Knight shot him a further two times and he eventually died.
Soon afterwards, at 9.45 p.m., a car containing Dimitrios Kolivas, Renata Coldabella, Danny Coldabella and Danny De Luca, followed Stanton down Hoddle Street. Knight, who was by this time beside the southern end of the Clifton Hill railway station buildings, fired a shot at the front of the car. The car stopped and as it reversed back up the street Knight fired two more shots at into it before it crashed into a police car, driven by Constable Dominic Canazaro, which had just arrived at the scene. The first shot that Knight had fired into the car had slightly wounded Renata, and the second shot he fired had seriously wounded Danny Coldabella. As Colivas's car was reversing a motorcycle being ridden by Wayne Timms and Jane Timbury, followed by a car containing Alexander Starmatopoulos, Stephen Starmatopoulos, Irene Fountis, Vicky Fountos and Panagiotti Fountis, drove into the ambush zone and stopped opposite Colivas's car. It was just after 9.45 p.m. and it expended 40 rounds of 22 caliber bullets. 25 rounds of 12-gauge buckshot and 32 rounds of 7.62mm caliber bullets in the preceding 15 minutes. Five people lay dead, two were fatally wounded and a further 17 had been wounded. In addition to the expended ammunition, Knight had lost his suicide bullet and another 7.62mm bullet as he had moved up to the nature strip. Knight had also lost his knife on the nature strip. He now retained only his M14 rifle and 17 rounds of ammunition. Police chase following his decision to withdraw, Knight turned around and climbed onto the western platform of the Clifton Hill Railway Station. He ran north along the platform and then continued moving north beside the railway line. He reached a fork in the tracks at around 9.46 p.m. and decided to follow the left fork. He spotted a police car in the northern end of Hoddle Street and fired three shots at it. The police car contained Sergeant Graham Larchin and Senior Constable Betty Roberts, who were not injured by the gunfire but who abandoned the car after Knight ceased firing. After firing at Larchin and Roberts's police car Knight moved into a nearby cluster of trees, sat down and smoked a cigarette. Minutes later, at 9.48 p.m., Police helicopter VHP VA, call sign, Air 495, arrived over the Clifton Hill area and began searching for night with a powerful NIT sun. Searchlight. A minute later D-24 ordered the Victoria Police's elite special operations group to attend the scene. Knight finished his cigarette and continued moving in a northwest direction towards Northcote. He crossed over the Merry Creek, which bordered Clifton Hill and Northcote, and took up a position at the end of a road bridge which spanned the creek. Just before 10 p.m. he fired a shot at a passing police officer, Constable Colin Chambers, who was slightly wounded in the right side. After shooting Chambers, Knight moved back across Merry Creek into the adjoining suburb of Fitzroy North. At this point he was chased by police helicopter Air 495 and he ran into a line of trees beside the railway line. He tried to avoid the searchlight for a few minutes but then, at 10.05 p.m., he broke cover onto the railway line, knelt down and fired three shots at the helicopter as it circled over him. The police helicopter, an aerospatial dolphin containing Senior Constable Trevor Wilson, Senior Constable Darrell Jones, Constable Keith Stewart and Ambulance Officer Alan Scott, was hit by the first shot which pierced its right main fuel tank and forced it to land on a nearby sports field. McKean Street in arrest night continued on into Fitzroy North and headed down McKean Street in an attempt to reach his ex-girlfriend's house. It was now 10.13 p.m. and Knight was spotted by two police officers, Constable John Delahunty and Constable Ralph Lockman, who gave chase in their police car, call sign Fitzroy 213. As they bore down on him Knight ducked into a laneway. 
turned around and fired his last ten rounds at the police car as it stopped in the middle of the road facing the laneway. Constable Delahunty, who was driving the police car, received minor shrapnel wounds to the face and left hand as he and Lockman tumbled out of the car with their revolvers drawn. The police car's headlights were on high beam facing the entrance to the laneway, which was also lit up by a nearby street light. As Delahunty and Lockman took up positions behind their police car and called upon Knight to surrender, Knight squatted down beside a low brick wall and searched his pockets vainly for his suicide bullet. When he realized that he had lost it he leaned out into the headlight beams and dropped the empty M14 on the ground. He then slowly stood up with his hands in the air. When he was fully upright Constable Delahunty stepped out from behind the rear of the police car and fired a shot at him. Knight was not hit but he ducked back down behind the low brick wall. As Delahunty and Lockman again called on him to surrender he yelled back, Don't shoot. I'm coming out. He again rose up with his hands in the air before walking out onto the street where he was arrested by Delahunty and Lockman. Numerous other police officers arrived at the arrest scene, and after a short, initially violent, interrogation, Knight was driven in an unmarked police car to the St. Kilda Road police complex by Detective Senior Constable Richard McIntosh. Detective Senior Constable Kim Cox and Constable Robert Kovacs. At the St. Kilda Road Police Complex Knight was interrogated extensively by McIntosh and Cox, briefly by the then head of the Homicide Squad, Detective Chief Inspector Brendan Cole, then extensively by Homicide Squad Detectives Detective Senior Sergeant Brian McCarthy and Detective Senior Constable Graham Kent. Knight also took part in a nighttime crime reenactment and a daytime crime reenactment, both of which were videoed, and he was interrogated until he was eventually charged with the murder of John Muscat at 12.20 p.m. on Monday, 10 August 1987.